Welcome to part one of a new series called Advanced Notion Coding. These videos assume that you have some prior knowledge of the functions available in Notion formulas, and I won't be diving deep into what they do or syntax specifics. Feel free to pause the video to copy everything down. Today we'll be learning how to code this, a mini calendar for your dashboard. This can be used to spice up your dashboard if you don't want to use the stock calendar block because it's too big and you need something small, or if you want to add something neat to your workspace. This video is going to be code intensive, so we're going to break things down into smaller chunks. But before we jump into our variables, we're going to be adding a welcome message. My message is simple. Today is plus now dot format, which will output a string of text rather than the date with an at symbol. We're also going to be adding two new lines with the regex backslash n to give the final calendar some space after the welcome message. Then we're going to dive right into our variables, and there's a bunch of them. So let's open up a let's function and let's begin defining them. Our first variable is going to be header, which is a list of text, and it is going to be our output that says Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the top of our calendar. Next is going to be year, which is just a year now, which will output the current year and update automatically. Days in month is a list of numbers that has all of the days that are listed within each month. You'll see February also has an additional check to see if there's a leap year. Remember that index locations always start at zero. So January is technically in the zeroth index, February in the first index. So for DPM, we are going to check our days in month list and we are gonna say at month now minus one so that it returns the correct number of days based on the index value. Next, we're gonna move on to indexes. Our goal here is to generate a list of ascending numbers with a length of the number of days in each month. So I'm gonna type out this formula so you can see what is happening at each step of the formula so you get a better understanding of how we are trying to achieve this goal. First, we're going to repeat x 31 times in our actual formula, we're going to be using DPM, but since our current month has 31 days, this will work as an example. Next, we're going to add dot split, which will output a list of text. And then we're going to map this list. We're going to say index dot to number plus one. This will give us a list of numbers starting at one, ending at 31. This is our goal but we're not quite done because we need to map these numbers again to make the single digit numerals read as 0, 1, 0, 2, rather than just one or two. This will allow the calendar when formatted to be justified rather than having spaces and making things look weird at the end. If you've seen any of my other Notion videos, then you know I'm a huge fan of styling things. While most of those are not required, this one unfortunately is. So I have five different variables that all have lists of text that will define the style moving forward. They are the header, filler days, regular days, the current week, and today. For our next set of variables, our goal is to find the day of the week for the first of the month. We're gonna do this by first creating month current, which consists of year plus a dash plus format date now with our formatting as capital M, capital M plus dash zero one. This will output the first of the current month in year month date format. Remember that parse date only works with text in that format, and that's why we're doing it. So month start is going to be parsing that date that we just created with the variable month current. We're gonna format it to a lowercase d. It will format the date as a numerical value as shown below. Next is month start block, which is going to repeat underscore underscore month start number of times. But what does this mean exactly? Why are we doing this? Well, the answer is simple. If D equals zero and the month starts on a Sunday, then we don't need any other filler days and the calendar can just begin from the first index. 
If D is two, then we need two filler days prior to the month starting. And if D is five, then we need five filler days prior to the month starting. Month start block creates these filler days and then splits them and maps them in the current style so that the output looks smooth and works with the rest of the calendar. Good news, you have to do all of that again, but it's really not that bad. You can copy and paste month current, month start, and month start block, and all you need to do is change dash zero one to dpm.format because we're gonna be looking for the last day of the month, which is also the number of days that the month contains. The other thing that needs to be changed is in month end block. We are going to say six minus month end. And why is this? Well, if D is six and the month ends on Saturday, then we do not need to add any filler days at the end. If D is four, then we need to add two filler days at the end, six minus four. If D equals one, then we need to add five filler days at the end of the month. Finally, our last variable is today, which we're just gonna format as DD, and you're done. Yay. Next is head, which contains header.split.map, current style as V join with a new line at the end. This was gonna create our header. Next, we have six variables that will define our weeks in the month with what should be some pretty obvious numbers. Week one is gonna start at index zero and end at index seven which will output the first seven days. Week two starts at index seven and ends at index 14, which will get us the second week and so on. But wait, there's a week six variable. Well, what's up with that? Well, the situation is kind of complicated. So if the beginning of the month starts on Friday or Saturday and it has 31 days, then there is a chance that the calendar can have six calendar weeks. So we need to take account of this overflow and make sure that we have enough spaces for these days to exist. All of them are formatted exactly the same way. Join, slice, our indexes, close the join, and then split them. Easy stuff, copy and paste. You did it, and you're ready for part two. I'm just kidding, we're almost done. This is the part where we actually build the calendar. Our last variable is called output format, and it's gonna start with head plus month start block. And then comes this nested if statement. So our goal is if week one contains today, then we're gonna test the current value. If that current value is today, then we're gonna style it Z, which is our today styling. And if not, we're gonna style it as Y, which is our week style. If the current week does not contain today, we're gonna to style it as X, which is our day style. And luckily you can do a bunch of copy paste because week two, three, and four are all the same as week one. Just remember to change your numbers from one to two, three, and four. Week five gets a little tricky. The core of it remains the same, but we need to add some qualifiers beforehand to make sure that the function works properly. So if month start is greater than four, the calendar will always have five weeks or more. So we need to account for this and add a fifth week if necessary. You'll notice that we have two different checks that we're doing before we output week five. One is to see if month start is greater than four and the month is February. Why is this? Because February sucks. It's too short and it always creates problems for the formulas every single time. And February will never have six weeks. So if the month is February, then we know we can output week five and that's it. We don't have to worry about outputting week six or anything else. So if month start is greater than four, then we need to test both week five and week six. The rest of the formula will take care of the filler days at the end. So we don't need to worry about whether or not the month actually has five or six weeks. All we need to do is test to see if that week contains today. 
And luckily for us, the formula is the same as all the other previous weeks. Just remember to change your numbers from week one to week five if you're copying and pasting. Our final test is the else statement for the initial ifs statement, and it just tests for week five. We're gonna close off our parentheses and then add month end block to the end to generate our filler days if necessary. Finally, we're gonna add our month and year at the top, which is optional because it can be included in the welcome message. And we're gonna add output format plus new line to generate the entire calendar. Here is the result. Definitely worthy of a little dance because it looks awesome. If you're looking for some more content, like and subscribe. Definitely appreciate it and it helps with the algorithm. For now, that's all I got. Stay tuned. Until next time on An Intriguing Notion.